How you guys doing? So today I'm going to look at this part here and this is part that goes onto the W axis and it holds the spring loaded webcam sensor and all that. Um, yeah, I'll uh, show some of the machining on this. I uh, had a bit of issues you can see over on the edge right there. Yeah, that turned out. But yeah, let me cut to the uh, machining of that. So I don't know, the feed, maybe it was a little too deep. This was uh, 0.5 millimeter. So, and then over here, just passed out one of the servos. It's too much vibration or something. So I don't know if I broke this, maybe, maybe not. But yeah, I'll have to step it down. Maybe I'll go uh, 0.25 millimeter step down and maybe it'll be better. So as you can see, yeah, it jumped around a bit and let's see if I can get this closer. So it gouged that up pretty good. Um, surprisingly, the uh, carbide insert uh, held together. It didn't break at all. Let me see if I can find it. So there is there, basically no damage. It's just a, like a little bit polished on the end, but it's pretty good. So when I first started out, I tried 0.5 millimeter step down and that was obviously too much and yeah just as soon as it started cutting on the y-axis in full depth then it started producing a lot of oscillations vibrations and stuff and that was enough to uh, get a servo to freak out i think it was the x servo that happened so i'll have to look at that um yeah otherwise uh yeah after that i stopped it and i dropped it down to 0.25 millimeters and then continued on so it went on for quite a while and then it happened in the same place again. So after that I used some cutting fluid and uh, that was enough to get through the rest of the job. As you can see I had to add another plate on here. So this one's been same deal, machined down on one side. The bottom side I've left raw on both sides. You can see the marks where, where I had some, uh, some glue attached to this thing so I could help holding it. So yeah that piece was TIG welded on there and that's how that one looks. What I end up doing for the welding of this thing, instead of clamping it all into a like a angle plate, 
I put some tape down on the angle plate and super glued this thing into place. And uh, that worked pretty good. I was able to get everything like exactly where I needed it to be. And that was enough to do some tacks. So I put three tacks on there. And then after that, I welded it. Unfortunately, uh, I went, got ahead of myself and I didn't clamp anything down. So as soon as I started welding this thing, the heat distortion came in and pulled everything apart. So it was, instead of 90 degrees, it was like 91 or 92 degrees. So after when it was all done, I, I went back and uh, put this whole thing in the six inch vise and just kind of squished it a little bit and got it back to 90 degrees. So after that slotting job, I would say that this one here is, just doesn't make a great tool for steel, at least on my machine. Uh, I have to run this thing slow, like too slow, and I'm not able to take a like a much depth on this thing. And then I, I end up just running this thing for quite a while. And yeah, it doesn't seem to work that great that way. Uh, yeah, I can't I can't bring the depth up on this thing or else, like at the low RPM, the, the RPM is what's killing me because I run this thing at 8,000 RPM and it produces a lot of vibration on the machine. And then I have problems all over the place. Um, so far currently with servos freaking out. But yeah, that's the case with that. If I were to run this thing higher RPM, like something around 18,000 RPM or 20, then the vibration is not enough to cause any issues. It's just too high of a frequency. The uh, BAP 300, this thing, I like this thing a lot better. It's just a lot more rigid of a tool. And uh, you can see comparison wise, like it's kind of like a big brother of that one. And like, at least with this one, I can go uh, full depth of cut on this uh, quarter inch steel, which is about uh, six millimeters, and it works pretty good. So this one's good for all kinds of jobs. I still really like this one. This one's the EMRC 12, and it's obviously like I'm, I've been using it as like a high feed cutter, and I find that works pretty good. It's like it's a giant radius, I think it's four millimeters, and with that, like you're it's really hard to damage that thing. Running this thing, I've been running this thing at like 0.1 millimeter. And at that depth, it's doing mostly axial cutting and not radial cutting, which is great because it's my machine set up mostly for handling those kind of stresses. I've been looking around for a comparable uh, dedicated high feed cutter. And I've seen some that are uh, about the same size, 12, 13 millimeter in two and three tooth. Uh, so I might try and get one of those and try that out. Asking around, people like uh, Stefan and some other people were insisting I should try carbide end mills again. So I'm looking at some ones that have a corner radius 45 degrees, uh, multi-flute, so I think probably like four or so, and uh, some also that have a giant radius on the bottom. And I might try and use those as high feed cutters. And I'll probably try and get a dedicated high feed insert tool as well and just see how they all kind of fare against each other. The uh, dedicated carbide end mills are probably going to be a lot sharper so they're probably going to have a lot more better time going into deeper material and producing less vibration. The uh, carbide insert tools are probably going to last considerably longer but if, the, if I can find cheaper carbide end mills that I can use as high feed cutters then you know, it'll probably work out fine. Here's how it looks like bolted onto the machine. And if I can just move this up and down, I can move it down. Don't think I'll be able to move it up. So it just moves like that. There is a small little gap in there. It's about two millimeters by design, just so things don't touch. Same on here, so over here it's not touching as well. And it just kind of goes up and down. It uh, has a bit of flex in it. Let's see if I can flex it from here. So that'll probably show up on camera. Like it's uh, six millimeter steel, so it's gonna have a bit of a bit of a flex in it. And this whole apparatus is attached to six millimeter steel on the back, but it's it's over the span of like a foot, so 12 inches or I don't know what that is, 30 centimeters. I don't know. I'm in Canada. It's all it's all messed up here. So yeah, that's in that direction. It's not like it's quite rigid there, but because this is on a small little thing, it's can flex a bit. So I might put some ribs on the back of this thing, probably on this edge here. This edge intersects over here, so I can't do that. But if I put a, 
a rib on the back there and maybe one, maybe two on the front there, I could probably make this whole thing considerably more rigid. So currently I don't have this thing set up uh, yet with electronics and, and everything. So like this separate motor is not powered yet. But uh, yeah, that's the next step on this thing is to get this thing moving up and down and also get that limit switch over there that's just kind of dangling. I'm not sure where I'm gonna put it. I might put it on the back of this piece of steel. You can't really see it though. But I could do something like that and have some kind of thing on one of these bolts that you know, like kind of intersects with it or maybe just the plate itself and have the proximity sensor horizontal and then have it like facing this way and then maybe intersect with there. That might be kind of a cleaner way to do it. So the next thing for me to do is machine a bunch of small little pieces of aluminum. I think I have three of them in there. So there's one there and then I skip. I have extra bolts in here because I don't really know what I'm going to put here in the end. So I just put a bunch in there. So I know I'm going to be using one, two, and three, and then I'm going to have some rails and some uh, bronze bushings and stuff and have a little thing spring loaded and slide along there. And that's what the webcam sensor is going to be attached to. Uh, I might even 3D print that whole thing just to test it out. And then once I'm happy with the shapes of everything, then machine it out of aluminum or something. So I'm going to cut the video here and this is where I am with this whole thing. It's uh, coming along, it's starting to look like how it's kind of drawn out in CAD, which is great. Just a few more little small pieces to do and then it'll be done. And I'll be able to get this whole thing running and figure out if I can make a flat surface with it. So thanks for all watching and I will see you guys next time.